Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, uh, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners, I want to thank everyone who supports us with a one-time donation at support.greatdetectives.net, as well as uh, everyone who gives to us on an ongoing basis at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now we're going to play one of the sh- programs that we've had least amount of information on, and this is called Follow That Man. So apparently there was another transcription of the same program under the title The Private Eye. We don't have the original air date for the program, but I would guess sometime in the late 40s to early 1950s. And this one is The Trail of the Terrified Temptress. He's heading for trouble. Taxi! Taxi! Over here! Yes, sir. Where to? Follow that man! Yes, follow that man. Follow him into danger, into romance and high adventure. Follow his trail wherever it leads, through a maze of thrills and spine-tingling intrigue. Yes, follow that man. Because it's Steve Mallory, the private eye. And here he is, Steve Mallory, in tonight's adventure for your product, The Trail of the Terrified Temptress. The trail began on one of those nights we seldom get in this part of California. Dry and dusty as a mummy shroud, with a grating sandpaper wind that dehydrates your eyes, cracks your lips, and splits your nerves wide open. The kind of night when solid citizens get together to keep from screaming and end up screaming at each other. But not me. Me, I was minding my own business, like the fellow says who was hit by a truck. Just sitting quietly in my own room, knocking myself out. I had the radio up and the last of the good scotch down, and I was... They told me if I came to Hollywood, I'd be in pictures in six months. I've been out here for six years now, and the closest I've come to a camera was when I had my kidneys x-rayed last fall. Oh, oh, but I'm not discouraged, no. I I had the fastest screen test in history. They called me at seven, shot the test at eight, ran the test at nine, and at ten o'clock I was back on my good humor wagon. But I want to tell you... Some of these California drivers they have okay, here are the okay. ones that really Walk forgotten. through it or wait till I open it. Well. Mr. Mallory, I was so afraid you'd be out. Ten more minutes, I would have been. What's on your mind, Let sister? me in, please, quickly. I've got to get out of this hole. How old are you? Twenty-two. Step right in. Lock it, lock it. Now, take it easy. I'm as eager as the next you beaver. You fool, there's a man following me. I'd be surprised if there wasn't. I'm afraid of him. He's been following me for days. You've got to protect me. Well, okay, but who's going to protect you from me? Please, please, I'm not joking. You've got to do something. What'll I do, start firing shots at the door? I haven't seen any man. He must be out there. He was right behind me in the lobby while I was coming up in the elevator. He was buzzing for it downstairs. Takes him a long time to get here, don't it? You're sure there was somebody following you? Oh, not that I doubt you, Go but... out there and look for yourself. Sure, only you come along. But I... But... Oh, no buts. I don't know you, sister. Not that it wouldn't be nice. But I'm not taking any chances. This door locks from the inside. Wouldn't I look like You've a... You've pr- got to trust me. Lady, I, I trust you more than anybody I know, but, but that's because I don't know you so good. Come on. <laughs> well, what do you know? Nobody in the hall. The elevator. Look, the door's partway open. Yeah, that's funny. Okay, buddy, you're faded. Come out grinning or pick up your marbles and slide back down that chute. It's a hot night and I don't want to play. There's a shoe wedged in at the bottom of the crack. Yeah, looks like it's full of foot. Well, here goes. 
this your big bad wolf, baby? Looks like you won't have any more trouble keeping him away from your door. <laughs> he was lying face down, mostly, but twisted like a Vienna roll, like he'd been just about to step out of the cab when it happened, and it spun around like a surf swimmer as the door closed on his foot. Whoever done it had been with him in the elevator. A long, pearl-handled nail file was the weapon, sticking straight out of the back of his neck like a Toreador's Espada. I knelt down to take a look at him. I turned him over. Dude, freak. Do you know him? I ought to. He's my partner at the agency. Oh, too bad. I told him he was getting careless lately. Should have let me cover him. Leaves me in a bad spot. But I'll promise you one thing, Harry. I'll get the dirty rat. Here, sister. But... Step in here. Give me a hand. Let's get his body out in the hall. Okay. Now listen, sister. What the... Hey! Well, I'll be a... She powdered out in the elevator. I beat it down the corkscrew steps like I was on fire, but when I hit the lobby, she was gone, and I couldn't find her on the busy street outside. She'd vanished like an ice cube in boiling water. I got hold of the hotel dick, and we beat it back up to my floor, the 11. You guessed it. Harry's body was gone, too. Yeah, there was a little blood, but the hideous corpus was gone like vaudeville. Yes, I blush to admit it, but I went to bed at nine. Sorry. You're not, and I'm used to it. And to what disaster do I owe the pleasure of this call? Brace yourself, honey. This old joke, and I, I don't see how I can soften it. Harry's been killed. Harry? Killed? But... Oh, Steve. Yeah, rough. <laughs> Nobody to intercept my passes for you now, baby. But listen, Rusty. Rusty. Yes. Rusty, don't crack up. Not yet. You gotta take it and you gotta hang on. At least for a while. A lot's depending on you. Okay, Steve. I'll make it now. Good kid. Now look, you've worked for the agency long enough to know that Harry's business was his business and mine was mine. Mm -hmm. We we didn't check each other and we didn't cross each other. But this makes his business my business. You get me? Yes, Steve. Okay. I want to know everything about the case he was working on and who was paying him. Some dame he was tailing led him up here, and she or somebody else knocked him off. You know who she might have been? Well, wait a minute. Yes, Nita, some, something. Nita called, that's it. I've got it all down in the folder at the office. Okay. Brief me on what you can remember and give me the fill-in later. Who had her shadow? Why, she hired Harry herself. She wanted protection. She was afraid of being alone or something. Wait a minute. Yeah, think so? Yes, and I think it's important. Harry filed a dictaphone report late this afternoon. He wanted me to type it tomorrow. He was pretty smug about it. You know, the way he gets when he's on to something. Said you'd be tipping your hat to him for a week. Yeah, he was always trying to get me to do that. Wish I had once in a while. Mm. Did he say what it was he discovered? No, he was in a hurry. Said he had to check the morgue files right away. I was already late getting out, so I controlled my curiosity till tomorrow. Anyway, it's all on the cylinders. Yeah. Yeah, what else on Nita Gold? She wanted to see you at first. I remember I thought that was odd at the time, so I took a better look at it. She looked a little dazed or something. Anyway, you were busy with a case of scotch. Yeah, I washed that up tonight. What else? Uh, what was she afraid of? Her own shadow, it seemed to me. Oh, darn it, Steve, I can't remember the details. Oh, yes, yeah, she's a singer. Might have known. Nice diaphragm. Where'd she work? At the Xanadu. Xanadu. Sunset Strip, huh? Well, we'll knock it off the income tax. Oh, Steve, are we going? Sure, baby. Soft lights and music for me and down to the office for you where oh. there's never a cover charge, never a minimum. Get all the dope out of the folder and phone me at the Xanadu. Oh, Steve, I do all the dirty work and you have all the fun. Sure, and I get all the credit and you get all the cash. Come on, Rusty, on your horse. Maybe Harry was in it for laughs, too. Maybe what happened to him is somebody's idea of fun. 
Well, whoever he was, baby, he's got himself a new playmate. And I don't think you'd like the way we're going to play. But you can sit on the sidelines and coach me, honey. You'll be doing as much for Harry as I will. Okay? Okay, Steve. And... Yeah? Oh, I was going to say be careful, but what's the use? Okay, honey. Over and out. Steve. Yeah? Be careful. Outside, the dry wind was beating the city like a rug. The gutters were gargling dust, and the hills above the Sunset Strip were huddling together like scared chicken thieves in the dark. The Xanadu was a beautiful club, in the same cheap way as most of the women who filled it. I mean, it had started as one fool's dream. It switched ownership a dozen times and always cost somebody dough. But while the old framework sagged under a dozen faceliftings, its surface was all fresh paint and glitter, and a sound of gaiety bubbled out of it like the hep chatter of an aging bobby soxer. It was run by Manny Borden. As far as I knew, it was run on the level. But when you balance a ledger on Manny's honesty, always leave room in the margin for correction. Manny Borden saw me coming in. He always liked me, like a wife like cigar ashes on the rug. Well, well, Steve Mallory. And I thought the two-bit cover charge would keep out the rip, Fran. Hello, Borden. That's a funny opening line. Is all your dialogue that good? The whole act is good, Mallory. But you can't get in it, so get out. Yeah, you get funnier all the time. But I can't wait for the topper. Where's the dame? We don't serve dames. You've got to bring your own. What dame? Don't act stupid, stupid. Need a golf, your canary. Where is she? Listen, Seamus. Where she is is where you ain't going to be. I got a package deal on that, and I deal you out. So like I said, you should pardon the expression, blow. You listen, Manny. I haven't got time to play footy with you. You tell me where she is or I'll ram your minimum down your throat. I think she killed my partner. Oh, too bad. He was only a step up from you, but I'd have taken odds you'd get it first. First or last, Borden, I want that dame. Lots of guys have made the same mistake. Try looking. I'll tell you when you're getting warm. Now, that's real helpful, pal. Where's that door back of the bandstand go? You're a bright boy, Stevie. You're getting warmer already. Thanks, sweetheart. I wrestled through the dancers on the floor like a stag at a sophomore hop, while two big guys in evening dress ran a photo finish for second to the door. They were right behind me as I opened it and helped me through with a gun in my back. We went down a short flight of steps into an alley outside. Then they went to work. Hey, the boss says we should clean your nose for you, Mallory. Says you're having trouble with it. Aren't you boys taking chances? Only two of you and only one gun? Once enough. Cover him, Crocker. Yeah. You know, I don't like his mouth. I think I'll change it. <coughs> oh, you never let a glove on me. Still talking, huh? I like it better, though, when them little red bubbles come up. Try this on for size. <coughs> oh, you're developing a nasty habit there. You ought to check it while you're young. Boy, you keep coming back like a song. Don't you? Yeah. Oh, now you're playing dirty. You know, I think I'm spoiling me manicure. You'll pardon my shoe. That's funny. Ain't got so much to say for himself now, has he? No. I thought he'd never run out of funny cracks. Too bad. I was just beginning to get a kick out of him. <laughs> came around, my my head felt like the inside of a washing machine flapping out the family flat work. I would have traded my stomach for one with ulcers, and my nerves felt like they'd been yanked from my body, rubbed with sandpaper, tied in knots, and put in backwards. Other than that, though, Borden's boys hadn't bothered me at all. I got my eyes swiveled around so they were both pointing at the same thing. I was lying on the couch in my own apartment, and across the room, Nita Galt was sitting in a strapless evening gown. Ah, it was that gown that undid me. Well, well. I've been sitting here wondering what color your eyes would be. Yeah, I'd like to know myself. What color are they? Blue. A lovely baby blue. With uh, just a shot of magenta for contact. Oh, cute. 
I love a broad with a sense of humor. And I love big, helpless brutes who get hammered unconscious by bigger, unhelpless brutes. Brings out the woman in me. Yeah, and that dress helps, too. Listen, sister, I... oh. <laughs> That's it. Lie back. Shouldn't try to do too much at first. A few weeks you'll be sitting up, and I'll start you weaving baskets. Oh, no, thanks. I uh, was never any good with my hands. Well, you're no good with your head, either. Especially when you lead with it. Yeah, I know. But I I have a lot of dumb luck. Like, I I take the count in an alley and wake up here with you. Think that's good? I don't know. How good is it? How good do you think? How good can it get? Oh, relax. You're still an invalid. Anyway, you're not my type. At least you wouldn't be long if Manny Borden found out. That reminds me. How'd I get here? I found you in the alley back of the club. I figured you must have been looking for me, so I kind of felt responsible. I brought you home. Yeah. Well, that's neat enough for now. Who killed my partner? You think I did, don't you? Uh, I don't know why you should have, but you could have. I don't know why I think you didn't, but I don't think you did. Thanks, Steve. Okay. But even I could be wrong. So far, it reads like a couple of pages must have been stuck together. Let's see. You came to me screaming for protection from the very guy you hired to follow you. Yeah. I did what? Well, you hired Harry to follow you, and then... I hired him? Yes, you hired him. Oh, are you sure? Sure, I'm sure, aren't you? Oh, no, not at all. Oh, oh good Lord, it's happened again. What's happened? Come on, baby, start making sense. Steve, look at me, oh... Not like that. Just just look at me and tell me. Do I look like a perfectly normal human being to you? Well, I'm normal enough not to think so. But when I talk to you, do I sound coherent? Do I make sense? Well, don't take my word. My, my class voted me most likely to become idiotic. But as far as making sense goes, the best I can say for you is that you seem normal. What I'm trying to say is I, I think I'm sane, as sane as any girl could be who's been through what I have, but... I don't remember ever seeing your partner before tonight. Give me that again. Gently. If you say I hired him to follow you up, I must have hired him, but... I don't know how to explain all this, but I have moments of... Well, I lose control. Things fill in on me. I forget. I, I don't know where I am or, or later where I've been. I, I never wanted it to happen when I was alone, so I... I thought of hiring someone to follow me. I thought of hiring you... Well, that makes sense. What you have is transitory amnesia. It's, it's like a champagne hangover. It comes and it goes. Now, you look smart to want to keep a tab on yourself. It's always nice to know where you've been. But what I say is, I thought of it. I don't remember doing it. Well, let's say you did. And then you forgot you hired Harry and you were afraid of him when you spotted him tailing you. So you ran to me because I was the guy you intended to go to in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. But that wasn't the worst of it. I, I mean, it wasn't just the fear of not knowing where I'd been, but but more the fear of what I might do, and, and, and still worse than that, of what I might be accused of having done. Do you see, do you follow this at all? I fell off as we rounded that last semicolon. I'll try a different approach. My husband... Oh? That's right. Oh. He's dead. Oh. And, and maybe I killed him. Manny Borden says I did. Well, Manny might be inclined to exaggerate. What's your story? I don't know what to think. I, I could have been... Yet I don't know. I, I loved Philip with all my heart in spite of what he was. Philip Galt? That the guy? Yes. Ah, quite a guy. Yes, he was. Yeah, nice people you play around with. I don't play. He was my husband. Sorry. No, really, kid, I, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. You're perfectly right. He was everything you think he was. Fast money boy, cheap, flashy, weak, a heavy drinker, a heavy gambler, a bad loser, and a worse winner. He wasn't even faithful. I, I don't know. I just loved him, I guess. I couldn't help it. <laughs> I should do this to music, sitting on a piano. Yeah. Yeah, well, anyway, I got troubles of my own. How was he killed? Automobile wreck. Manny says I was driving... Says I'd been drinking and crashed into a road bank on a detour in Topanga Canyon. Steve, if it's true, then I'm guilty of manslaughter and I want to pay for it. But I can't remember. I can't remember a thing. 
Yeah, how come Borden knows so much about it? He says I walked to a grocery store and phoned him to get me. That sounds like something I'd do. He says he picked me up and brought me home. The boys got the car off the road and took Philip's body away. What boys? Crocker and Jenk. Oh, those boys. Yeah, I've had the pleasure of meeting Crocker and Jenk. I'm in the clear if it's true, but I don't remember ever being out of my room. When I came out of the fog, my clothes were torn. I was covered with blood and I reeked of liquor. But there are about eight hours I can't account for. Whose car were you supposed to be driving? Mine. Mm-hmm. That is, my, my husband's. I, I mean, it was registered in his name. Mm, but you paid for it. Oh, well, yes. Where is it now? Have you seen it? Yes. It's a horrible mess. Manny has it hidden in one of his garages. He has a lodge in Topanga. That must have been where we were going. I don't know. So, Manny did his good deed, hushed it up, and kept you out of it. For the police, that'd make him an accomplice, more guilty than you are. What's it make him to you, Scoutmaster? What do you mean? Ah, quit stalling. He did it because he wanted something. He never did anything any other way. He has a way of getting what he wants. You didn't go for him, so now he's playing heavy, heavy hangs over thy head with this manslaughter rap. And you're the forfeit. Am I right? All right, just scare me. Yeah. Sometimes I scare myself. Especially when I can't figure out how any of this has anything to do with Harry's death. I owe you an apology for running out on you the way I did. I was panicking. Oh, yeah, you had a right to be. If they ever started grilling you and you cracked out with that transitory amnesia stuff, you'd be cooked. Especially if they tumbled onto this manslaughter caper. That's the big joker. That and why anybody was mad at Harry. Now, I got a lot of good back fence gossip here, but nothing that ties up with him. That's all I care about. Is that all you care about? I thought I wasn't your type. You'd be somebody's type. But not yours. No, not mine. Well, forget it. You forget things, so... Forget it. All right. And while you're forgetting, forget I kissed you. But you didn't. Oh. Oh. You are my guy. Thanks. I was afraid I was using the wrong toothpaste. So far tonight, nobody seemed to like me very much. Maybe my charm's coming back. I think I'll go over and try it out on Manny Borden. Well, they say a crook always returns to the scene of a crime. So does a cop. It was a crime the way Manny Borden's boys had mussed me up, but... I was willing to forgive and forget. After I kicked their teeth out, I got back to the Xanadu at 4 a.m. The place was dark. Looked as empty as a canary cage after the cat got in. Except for one light in back. The alley door made just as good an entrance as it did an exit. I picked my way through the darkened club without playing musical chairs with the furniture. The door of Manny's office was partly ajar. I sidestepped the shaft of light that knifed out of it and plastered myself against the wall like I was part of the woodwork. It was a funny kind of night for Manny to be interviewing talent, but I thought I'd wait my turn. A little courtesy never hurt anybody. Whoever he was talking to was a good friend of his, same as me. Grifter, you're dead and you'll stay dead if I have to see to it myself. Sure, man. Sure, I'll stay dead. For another five minutes. You know, this being dead is kind of quiet. Leads to thinking. I've done a lot of thinking lately, mulling over my misspent life. I kind of wish I had it back to live all over again. Maybe I'd live it differently. You know, you get an idea like that in your head, and it takes a lot to make you stay dead. Like I said, my friend. It'll take a lot less than that to make you stay dead, though. I know, I know. But I don't think you want to get involved. Not that way. It is dead. Be kind of messy. You'd make the kind of mess I like, a quiet mess. Remember, Galt, you're already dead. Yeah, I know. It's sad, isn't it? But I'm afraid there's a certain young lady who doesn't hold with that 
You remember, I told you about her. She's the one who influenced me to leave Nita to your tender mercies. No, she kind of fancies me the way I am. And she knows where I am and what I'm here for. So if I don't come back, I have an idea she'll get a little nervous. And when she gets nervous, she likes to talk to somebody. And I think you know who she'll talk to. You're bluffing. You wouldn't tell that to me, then. <laughs> now, if I'm bluffing, you'll never know until you call me. Besides, I'm getting bored with this deal. There's only one way the play can go. And I'm holding all the cards there are. I should have made that car crank up the real thing in the first place instead of a phony. Well, you go for phony setups, Manny. Because you're a phony yourself. Phony crack up, phony amnesia, phony everything. All but the five grand. And that better not be phony. Pardon me, punk. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Good. Nice work, Jank. No, no, I'll take out the launch and head for Catalina. Yeah. About halfway over? Mm-hmm. That's right. All right, Galt, that'll be all out of you. I just filled an inside straight and you're covered. Don't be a fool, man. I put down that gun. So the dame will sing, huh? You didn't know it, punk, but she's the only card you had. So the last time you were here, Jenk followed you to see where you went. And you led us right to her like the smart operator you are. So, Jenk's taken her for a boat trip. And maybe she can walk back and maybe she can't. But you're one dead man who ain't gonna tell any tales. Now, wait a minute, Manny. You're making a mistake. I... I lied. She doesn't know anything. That's what you get for shooting off your face. And come to think of it, that ain't such a bad idea. No. No... No, no, Manny, please. Wait a minute. You're going to believe me. I, I'll get out of town. I'll never come back. I, listen, Manny. I've listened enough, you yellow-bellied louse. I killed that Seamus because you were sap enough to let him recognize you. You don't think I'd stop at you. No, no, no oh, Manny, give me a break. What do you want me to do? I'll do anything, Manny. Anything you say. I, I... want you should drop. No, no, no. For God's sake, Manny. Oh. oh. Who are you? The United States Cavalry. Who do you expect? You... You saved my life. Yeah. I'd rather save kitchen fat. It's worth something, Galt. I know. I, I got that coming. Listen, I got to stop them. They got my girl. They got to... Yeah, I heard. Give me that phone. I'll call the harbor police and the coast guard. Hold it. Hey, boss, it's Jank. You in there? We'll waltz me around again, Jank. Hey, boss, I need the key to the lock. Meet the new champ, Jenk. Well, there was a little more excitement after that. I, I had to get the drop on Crocker, Borden's other handyman. Well, that turned out to be easy. He was in the back of the car trying to keep Galt's woman from kicking out a window. Well, I didn't dirty my hands on him. I, I let Galt do that. Was his woman. It was a nice fight while it lasted, but when Galt went down for the fourth time, I, I kind of influenced the decision with the butt of my gun. I turned the whole mess over to the local gendarmes. Jenk, Crocker, Galt, the dame, and what was left of Manny Borden. Made a nice package, but no profit to the agency. Borden had been feeding Nita Galt a drug that made her lose her memory for short periods of time. Yeah, yeah, they have things like that. And then the rat killed my partner, Harry, because Harry spotted Philip Gould alive. Ah, poor old Harry. He found his body on the roof of my building. The killer dragged it up there when I went after Nita. Planned to dispose of it later. Good boy. Knew his act of habeas corpus. I got to bed about ten the next morning and was just about to sleep when... Oh, no, not again. Steve, where have you been? I've been trying to get hold of you all night. Oh. I have that information you wanted. Oh, great. Yes, this will stun you. Harry was following Nita Galt because she was subject to spells. Yeah, but... yeah, that's fine. Write me a letter, will you? Well, what's the matter? Don't you want to hear this? Harry had seen her husband coming out of the Xanadu. Sure, only sure. Here. Some other time I am trying to sleep. Well, that's a fine attitude, I must say. 
I spend the night knocking myself out doing your work for you, and now you tell me... Rusty, honey, I, I love you dearly. I appreciate everything you've done, but do me one more favor, will you? Yes. Go out and read the newspaper. All right. What page? Oh, Rusty. Well, I guess you know what you're doing. Yeah, I think I do. I'm going to sleep. Steve. Steve Mallory. Well, wouldn't that curdle you? Go on to sleep at a time like this. Well, that's all there was to it. A dead husband who wasn't dead, an amnesia victim who didn't have amnesia, and a few double crosses that didn't come off. So I guess this is the end of the trail. Here's where I'll drop you off tonight. Uh, driver. Yes, sir? Pull up just a minute. So long. See you next week. Okay, let's go. There goes that man again. Yeah, he's really heading for trouble. Mallory's off in a cloud of dust, speeding off in pursuit of new adventures. So follow that man. Follow the trail of Steve Mallory again next week as he leads you along the trail of the tingling spine. <laughs> the Private Eye is written for radio by Doug Hayes, who plays the part of Steve Mallory. Production and music by Richard O'Ron. Nita Goff was played by Monty Margaret. The part of Rusty was played by Rosemary Kelly. Stanley Waxman was Manny Borden. Philip Galt was played by Tom Holland. Buddy Gray was Crocker. And Paul Freeze was Jenks. This is James Matthews speaking. This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. A bit of an odd story, both in terms of acting and production, but a nice little curiosity. And uh, researching the writer and star, Douglas Hayes, the main thing I've been able to come up with him is his uh, radiography from radiogoldindex.com. And per them, he was actually uh, the writer on three different scripts, uh, an episode of Let George Do It, an episode of Rogue's Gallery, and an episode of Wild Bill Hickok. Also, there was a book published in the uh, 1960s that'd be the basis for a movie called The Comedy Man. Not certain if that's the same Douglas Hayes. Again, this is sketchy. Probably the most remarkable thing about this is that uh, Douglas Hayes was the writer and star, which doesn't generally uh, bode well for a project. And based on the intro, it doesn't seem a stretch to deduce that this was supposed to be a syndicated program. So it's rare to see such talent uh, such as Paul Fries uh, backing it up. So again, another interesting curiosity. I hope you enjoyed it, and next week we'll bring our final one of these, The Judge, to you. And uh, join us tomorrow for Richard Diamond. If you do have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives.